Hello, this is Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and I'm going to show you how I painted this pumpkin topiary with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So I have my design already drawn out on the canvas and I used uh, my traceable drawing for this. So I just printed this out and uh, taped it together for the 11 by 14 size and used a sheet of graphite paper underneath to transfer the design. I also have an 8 by 10 size for you if you wanted to do this on that size canvas as well. So what we're going to do first, so you're going to um, you trace the design on the canvas. You can also draw it if you want. Um, but what we're going to do first is we're going to paint the background. I used Payne's Gray for this. It's a very um, kind of a bluish uh, black color. Um, if you don't have Payne's Gray, you can use any kind of black. You can use Mars Black or um, Lamp Black or ivory black, whatever black you have on hand. And I'm going to use the three quarter flat brush to paint the entire background. So I'm going to paint all around the pumpkin topiary design. Uh, I might paint over the sunflower petals and that's okay. Um, I tried my best to go around the stem because I didn't really want to lose that shape. But the part of the stem that kind of swirled and curved, I painted over that and um, that was fine. I repainted that later. And also this pumpkin, um, this painting looks really good on one of those stretched canvases because we're going to do these polka dots in the background and the polka dots look super cute when you paint them on the sides of the canvas. So make sure that you paint the black, um, the Payne's gray on the sides of the canvas as well. What's also helpful with this, uh, since we're filling up such a big area with the solid color, is to slightly water down the paint. Um, not too much, but adding just a little tiny bit of water. Um, you can dip your brush in the water and then grab the paint. Um, it helps to thin it out slightly, but it also gets it to flow. So when you're painting, it's nice and smooth and it's not getting all dried out and kind of clumpy for you. Um, it's a very even sort of thin layer, but it's solid. So we want to cover all that canvas up. And right here I switched to my number four round brush and I did that just so I can get around that stem because I didn't want to lose that stem shape, but I did lose my curly thing that went on. Um, I painted that later. And so just kind of take your time. This video is speeding up just slightly here, but take your time to go around the topiary um, the best you can so we don't lose that main shape. And like I said, paint the sides. So when I do sides, I definitely like to kind of water it down a little bit slightly more um, just so it flows nicely and kind of goes super fast on the sides. And so when you are done with the background. You want to let it dry. You can use a hair dryer or you can take a break and come back, but it's got to be pretty dry um, so that we can do these gold spots. So uh, I used gold paint for this. Uh, I suppose you can use like copper or other metallic colors. Um, and I use these pouncers. These are the Martha Stewart brand pouncers. The one on the left, I lost the white plastic um, holder for it, but it still works without the holder. Um, and so I used those two different sizes. They're, they're not numbered, so I can't tell you exactly which one it is, but they're two of kind of the smaller or medium size ones. So you're going to dip it in the gold, and I like to press and kind of turn. Um, you may not get like your perfect circle at first, but if you kind of really press it, not too firmly, but not too light, just kind of the right amount of pressure, you have to kind of experiment with that. And so you just kind of press it and turn it. And when you turn it, um, it makes sure that paint gets all on that circle. And when I load it on the palette, I kind of like to um, press and turn as well. Um, but you get a lot of excess paint like on the corners of the circle, if that makes sense. So you may want to just kind of um, swipe it off on your palette a little bit if it starts building up on the sides because then you'll get um, circles that are like super thick paint on the outside part and we don't want that. 
So just do the best you can to kind of fill it in. Um, so with my circles, they're not they're not like in a in rolls or anything. They're not going vertically or uh, they're really sporadic and kind of spread out in different areas. And um, so I did the, the smaller one. So I'm going to demonstrate with the smaller one. Like I said, it still works without that plastic holder. But you still have to kind of hold it gently with, without that plastic thing. And so kind of the same thing, just press and turn and make your dots sporadically throughout the backgrounds. Um, definitely do them on the sides of the canvas. That's super fun and you can make dots that are kind of going off on the sides of the canvas. You can make dots that are overlapping the pumpkin. So uh, perhaps the, the spots are behind the pumpkin. So when you paint them, you just paint them over it, but then we'll paint over the pumpkin later. And I'm gonna add some more spots on the side of the canvas and um, I guess you can experiment if you wanted to do different size circles like smaller ones um, I'm not sure if big ones would work maybe if you wanted to do um, because the Martha Stewart pouncer pack it comes in I think five or six different size circles I know there's a, there's a pretty large one in there um, but I mainly only use them for um, when I'm doing this kind of thing in the background the polka dot thing um, I use them every once in a while if I want like my sun in my painting or my sun in the sky to be nice and perfectly circular um, I guess I think I used them for one of my truck paintings but um, they're kind of nice just anytime you um, just want a nice circle sponge um, shape on your painting so they're kind of fun and crafty and I'm just filling this all up and you can see like the parts that I overlap the pumpkin um, I'll, I'll paint the pumpkin over that so you won't see them in the end for the most part and just fill it up until you are satisfied with the amount of polka dots you have in the background Make sure that when you're done with the sponges that you clean the paint off right away because it dries super fast and it gets all crusty and caked on there. Trust me, I've done it before and it takes a lot of work to get all the dried paint off of the sponge. Okay, uh, we are going to move on to the uh, actual painting of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna start at the bottom pumpkin and um, this is, I guess, the white pumpkin, and I used three colors in this. I used titanium white, unbleached titanium, that's that beige color you see, and then burnt umber. And so um, the reason why I'm starting at the bottom of the topiary is because the pumpkins are overlapping each other. So we wanna start at the bottom because this is the one that's kind of underneath the green one. And so um, also use your 12 bright brush, so that is a smaller brush than that, the one that we used for the background, so that's a 12 bright. Load it in the unbleached titanium, and for this one I'm gonna start with the bump in the middle. Um, when I do pumpkins, I do one bump at a time, and I make my strokes go um, curved um, in the, dir the direction of the shape of the bump. So this is the unbleached titanium, and I'm just painting the two curves on the outside and they're both gonna curve and meet in the middle. And by the time I get into the middle part, the curve is gonna be pretty vertical. So um, so you, you, you're you contouring your strokes. You're making it go in the direction of the shape you're filling it in so that it creates um, um, the look of the impression that it is a pumpkin just because of the direction that our strokes are going in. So this is solid unbleached titanium. I haven't added any more colors yet, super easy. And so what I'm gonna do next um, is I'm gonna incorporate the next color, which is gonna be titanium white. But first, I'm gonna wipe this off with my paper towel and then grab that titanium white and maybe drag it out on my palette a little bit. And so there's titanium white on my um, unbleached titanium. Um, amount of paint so there's it's guess it's double loaded and I know this is going nice and slow but this is kind of showing you the technique here but this is going to be wet on wet blending so I'm just going to let that white slightly blend with that unbleached titanium 
and it's going to create a two-toned look uh, with the pumpkin. And so my goal isn't to take the white and completely cover it all and let it mix into one color. I want to leave it unblended. So that streak of white in there that's still curving in the same direction is allowing it to create this two-toned look. And so when you go on to the next bump, this one has more titanium white um, than uh, unbleached titanium, but you can see that the two sort of, I'm, I'm going to go by beige and white because that's such a big word. Um, the white and beige, and so this bump is curving, so you want to keep going in that direction of the curve, but because it's lighter, it's going to stand out from that, um, the first bump that you painted. And so you're just going to fill that in, doing, uh, letting the colors sort of blend themselves. And you're going to do this technique to the entire pumpkin. So when you go on to um, the next bump, again, we want this to be lighter just so it can stand out from the first bump. And um, when you go on to the bump after that, maybe you can make it a slightly different, uh, maybe a little bit more beige than white so it can stand out. And so what I'm doing here and why I'm doing it is I'm just adding a little bit more beige streaks to these because um, the two bumps are a little bit lighter than I wanted them to be. So I, I just add a little bit of beige streaks in there um, just to kind of darken it slightly. And then I'm doing the bump on the far right. And you may notice that um, you're kind of losing the lines of the pumpkin. So we have those lines drawn in, but then when we paint it in, um, those lines kind of disappear. We will go back and outline those lines a little bit with a, a round brush and a, that dark brown that's on our palette. So that's what that dark brown is for. And so this bump in the middle, I wanted to add some more white to just kind of brighten that up. So I just grabbed some white on my palette and doing this streaky thing. So notice all my strokes go from the top of the pumpkin, stroking down in that curved direction. They're not short strokes. They're not um, I guess for vertical strokes, they're curved. And um, you have those, um, the gold spots. If any of your gold spots are showing through, um, just add another coat on there. Um, titanium white is really good at being opaque and covering up. So your gold that's showing through, just add a few um, stroke um, coats of titanium white in there so it'll cover that, um, the polka dot, okay? Um, so we're going to do that line thing that I was talking about and I'm switching to a number four round brush and I'm going to load this brush so that I get that brown right there on the tip of my brush and I do that by kind of twisting it and when you twist it you get your bristles to go to a point and it can really allow you to get that paint right there on the tip. That allows us to paint our um, nice thin line with our brush. Um, so for these lines here, um, we are going to start at the top and we're going to paint down and our brown is going to run out and that's what we want. Um, we're going to do that again. We're going to start at the top and stroke down. So, um, this is a very, very lightly, I'm not pressing hard with my hand at all. I'm holding it lightly. I'm kind of starting out firm and releasing my pressure a little bit just because I want that brown to kind of fade away. I suppose you can outline it consistently all the way down if that's what you want, but I was going for the kind of fade look with my lines. And so we are done with the white um, pumpkin on the bottom. We're gonna move on to the green pumpkin next. I did the green pumpkin with the colors light olive green and green deep permanent. So we're gonna call it light green and dark green. And I also use that same 12 bright brush. So I did this um, pretty much very similar to the way I did with the white one, but maybe slightly different, same technique, but kind of 
different execution, I guess. Um, but I started with the far right bump. Um, again, the strokes have to curve and go in the direction of the bump. And so I did all my bumps, all this color first, and then I went back and did that darker um, and highlighting sort of thing. But you wanna make sure that this green is overlapping your uh, white pumpkin because it's on top. So when you paint the bottom parts of it, you wanna make sure you paint the bumps on the bottom part of the pumpkin. And so I'm just taking this and filling it in, using the full width of the brush, making sure I'm painting the bumps on the bottom. Now, um, you may notice light olive green is a very um, translucent looking color, and that's okay. This is just the first coat, so if it's not, cover, not giving you good coverage yet, that's okay. Um, we're going to do that double load streak thing again. So it's the same thing as the white, just kind of doing it a different, um, I guess, way. Um, but load, it, load your brush in the green without rinsing it off. If you need to wipe your brush off, you can. And do the same thing with the green. Allow it to create these strokes of the darker areas and the bumps, but letting it blend with the light green. We're not trying to cover all the light green. We're just trying to create, I guess, some pumpkin texture. So this is the deep green permanent and um, it is also kind of a translucent color, but um, it's got okay coverage. Just make sure that you're covering all the white part of the canvas and see that little dot that's showing through. Uh, we're gonna cover it with some um, white when we do the highlighting. So when we do the highlighting, wipe your brush off. You don't have to rinse it off. Just wipe it off with the paper towel. Load it with the white, kind of drag it on your palette a little bit. And you can um, gently, so your white should not be super um, bright um, if it's mixing with that green. So it should be kind of um, dull, but if it's like super, super white, you could always wipe it off a little bit and, or mix a little bit of green into it. But gently add um, the streaks of white in there. This is again, similar to how we did the white pumpkin. So adding that streaks of white in there to give it that extra shininess, um, but not trying to cover all the green. So letting it sort of blend. And you can see how that titanium white helps to cover up the polka dot gold thing that's showing through it because it's such an opaque color. Then I'm gonna go back in here with that dark green. I wanna really define those bumps on the bottom because that is definitely overlapping. Maybe it might be slightly darker down there. So I grabbed more of that um, dark green and I'm just kind of defining that with my brush and maybe stroking up a little bit to kind of blend it back up. And that is it for my green pumpkin. Oh, we are gonna do the brown thing again. So grab your number four round brush with the brown, twist it to get it right there on the point, and do your lines, kind of the same thing. So start at the top and stroke down, and let it run out, uh, or start your pressure hard and release the pressure so that it gets lighter. So I didn't make my outline go all the way down, I just started it at the top, and kind of tricks that you're tricking the eye to think that it is going all the way down, but it's not. And so we're going to move on to the orange pumpkin. I used cad orange here, um, cad cadmium orange hue. These colors have such long names. So this is the orange and um, same technique. It's just I'm doing it in a different order. I'm starting with the middle bump this time. And I mean, you can start with the far right bump if you want. I just decided to start with the middle one this time. And so this is just the orange, no blending yet, no nothing. It's just gonna be solid orange. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm contouring my strokes, getting them to kind of curve in that direction. And I'm gonna grab that white for the next bump. So this bump, I have white and orange on my brush. They are blending together to create this pretty light orange color. And I'm gonna fill that in. Make sure that you're also defining the bumps on the bottom so because this orange pumpkin is overlapping that green pumpkin. Now you may run into tr some troubles here because if that green isn't dry, you may end up grabbing green and the orange. And actually I think that would look kind of cool if you ended up mixing a little bit of that green into the orange. It would give it kind of a, a, a really cool orange looking color if that it's okay if the orange mixes with green, but um, if you wanna dry your painting real quick, you can, if you're worried about that green mixing with the orange. 
And so uh, for each of the bumps, I'm just creating different variations of that white and orange, just so I can have the bumps stand out from each other and making sure that my strokes are curving and going in the direction of the shape that I'm filling in. And uh, keep in mind that we'll also do the brown lines. So if you lose the lines of the pumpkin, we will define those again later. And just make sure you're really defining the shape. So go all the way to the edges. Um, there shouldn't be any white canvas showing through, especially on the edges of it. So you want to go all the way to the Payne's Gray. And even if you have to paint slightly over the Payne's Gray, that's fine. And see right here, I'm really defining that edge. No white spots showing through. And we have our base of our pumpkin and we can go in and do the streaky thing again. So with the white and starting in the middle and see how bright that was. Okay, so that's a super easy fix. Just wipe your brush off and um, mix it back in. So that's because that orange was still wet, I was able to blend it back in quickly. A paper towel is always nice to have on hand to wipe your brush. Sometimes it's better just to wipe your brush off with a paper towel versus rinsing it off and getting it all wet and having to reload the brush. Um, so that is my top orange pumpkin. And then I'm gonna do the brown thing. So grab my number four round brush again with the burnt umber and do the lines that are starting at the top and kind of um, fading downwards. With this brown, it, it might be helpful to slightly water it down too because that'll make it really flow for you. Um, right there at the bottom, I used brown to kind of do those bumps again, kind of really define those bumps, um, make them slightly darker. And then I'm gonna go in and start painting my stem in with this brown. Now I know my stem turns green later, as you can see in the example painting, it turns green, but right now it's gonna be brown. And this is just the burnt umber. I'm using that, still using the number four round brush and I'm painting that stem. And so um, when I painted the paints gray, we kind of lost the loop-de-loop thing. So you may want to look at the drawing or the example to kind of see where it goes, or you could make it go your own direction, but it curls and then it kind of goes off to the side. And um, so what I'm doing here, I wiped the brown off my brush and I, this is that olive green color. So I'm going to transition to green here with this curly stem because the, the green is a, the stem turns into this vine that wraps around the pumpkin um, so using that green and the light off olive green I mentioned earlier it's such a translucent color so to make it kind of more opaque you can grab a little bit of titanium white on the tip of your brush and let that blend with the light olive green or on your palette you can mix light olive green with titanium white maybe about equal parts probably two parts light olive green one part white just to get that light olive green to be opaque because titanium white will make any color super opaque for you but it also makes that color kind of pastel like too but so i'm taking this vine and i'm sort of just defining where i want it to go so i'm loading it in the light green loading it in the white and it's creating an opaque color that will show up against the dark background and maybe I can grab some of that dark green too. So I am incorporating the deep green permanent there as well. And so I'm just painting a second, third coat over my stem. I'll go over this area as well. It's super dark in this area, but like I said, you can make it lighter with the white. And then um, kind of think about where you want your um, vine to go. Um, you can look at my example to see where I went with mine or you can make yours go in different directions But I wanted mine to wrap around so on my palette here I'm actually making my opaque color here because I'm tired of double loading. So I just kind of mixed a Deep green permanent with the light olive green and the white uh, on my palette there so I can grab from that and so I'm gonna have my vine go behind the orange uh, maybe come out to the side right here and it's still kind of behind the pumpkin and maybe it comes out over here kind of spirals and then right here so 
uh, I want this line to be super flowy, grabbed some water in there and I kind of slightly watered down that color on my palette right there. Um, that'll get your paint to flow nicely. So that's slightly watered down and see how that flows. Um, it also helps when you get that paint right there on the tip of the brush. So when you're loading it and you kind of twist it, that really helps with the flow as well. And so I'm taking that white and I'm just kind of really kind of going over it to make it nice and opaque because it's a dark background and I want that um, curly vine to show up. And then I'm taking that white and I'm brushing kind of down on the stem to create sort of this texture thing on the stem. Next I'm going to do the leaves and I just kind of um, painted these leaves with um, I loaded some more white on there, um, but I'm mixing it with that sort of green mixture that I made earlier, that deep green per minute, that light olive green with a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna kind of freehand paint these leaves. Now, if you don't feel uh, comfortable just um, free painting the leaves, you can get a pencil and you can draw them out first and then paint them in. Or you can get one of those, you can get chalk. Chalk is always really nice to use on canvas paintings because you can draw it out, paint it in, and the chalk erases. Um, you can use a chalk pencil. So the chalk pencil will give you a more precise line to do. And so there's different ways you can do this if you're not really comfortable just painting them in. But um, I did a very loose sort of pumpkin leaf shape and then I painted it in that solid sort of light green color but then I went back in and add maybe some more texture lines in there with that darker green. Um, at the very end of this painting I did the the, the veins on the leaf um, but I did not do that now. This is just the shape of the leaf and painting it in. So um, having my leaves kind of go in different directions with this vine that's kind of swirling around the pumpkin topiary and you can do as many leaves as you want. I did a few and um, doing uh, when I do leaves I just really grab different greens on my palette. I'll grab the darker green, then I'll grab the lighter green, then I'll make a different green on my palette with white. So there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. I just like to grab different colors because I love doing color variations in my paintings. I don't usually like making anything a solid color of one color. I like grabbing different colors and letting them kind of blend together. I do a lot of blending on the canvas. And so that leaf is kind of curving down on the side. And um, I did one leaf that um, sort of overlapping the pumpkin. I didn't want to have a lot of leaf overlapping the pumpkins, uh, but this one is slightly overlapping that white pumpkin. And just grab in different amounts of greens, um, creating the very um, sort of abstract leaf shape. And so there are my pumpkin leaves. And so next we're gonna do these sunflowers. And I really tried to simplify these sunflowers because sunflowers can be tricky. I have quite a few paintings that have sunflowers in them. So if you wanted to like look at those first, if you really wanted to go into detail with your sunflower, you can do that. But I kind of did the same sort of technique that I do with all my sunflowers. So I start with the brown circle and I paint the circle. Now for me, my drawing, I can still see my drawing through this, um, through my painting. Um, probably because the pumpkin, the white pumpkin is a light color and I can see my pencil lines still. So that was really nice. Um, it might be a bonus for you if you can still see your pencil lines. Um, if not, then you can lightly draw them with a pencil. You can always you can also take your traceable and retrace the sunflowers again. That's what's nice about the traceables is you can always take it and then get your graphite paper and apply it wherever you want. And um, so I did the brown circles and the, the petals I did with primary yellow. I'm using my number four round brush for this, by the way. Um, so primary yellow. So I just outline the petal shape and fill it in solid with the primary yellow. To get your yellow to be nice and opaque, you add the titanium white. So you see me double loading the tip of my brush in the white and the yellow, and that'll get your yellow uh, petal to really show up 
um, especially on that dark part of the background. If your petals are going off over the panes gray, there will be kind of, um, you'll need like 30 coats to finally cover it. But adding that white in there is going to allow it to be more opaque and not so see-through. Um, so I did all the petals of this sunflower over here. And uh, I mean, primary yellow is super translucent. So like I said, just um, allowing it to, um, allowing yourself to add a little bit of white in there really helps to make those petals more um, opaque. Uh, better coverage and so uh, I like to add a little bit of brown to the petals of my sunflower so just the tip of my brush a little bit of brown just a tiny bit like you see me loading it but then dragging it out on, on my palette because I don't want a lot of brown on the tip of it if I add too much brown it's just gonna be a big chunk of it and see like right there it you'll turn you'll get brown petals and so just a teeny tiny bit and we can kind of go back over that with more yellow and um, to um, kind of blend it back from the brown. So it's a brownish yellow sunflower. And then going back, um, I go back over my circle. So defining that circle shape again, and then I'll do the dots in the middle of the circle. So wiping my brush off, and I'm gonna load the tip of my brush in some white and do white dots. And I'm also going to do brown dots as well. So um, wipe your brush off a little bit, load it in the brown, and do your brown dots. So that gives you that texture in the middle of the sunflower. For the other sunflower, I'm going to do the exact same technique. But first, I'm going to rinse my brush off because it's full of brown and white, and I just want to start over fresh here. So this is the primary yellow. I am first defining my petal shapes. And again, if your yellow is not giving you the coverage you want, just grab that titanium white and it will make it nice and opaque. You can also pre-mix your yellow with the white and um, so it'll be a solid yellowish white, but I like to, um, like I said, mix my colors on the canvas. So grab the brown and do that streaks of brown. I know this is going a little bit fast here, but it's the same exact technique that I did with that first sunflower. And so just this, the streaks of brown right there at the base of the sunflower. And then when you're done with the streaks, redefine your circle and then do your dots with the, yeah, the white dots and the brown dots. So that creates the texture in the middle part of the sunflower. The brown and the white um, create the color variation. So it's not just solid white, it's kind of brown and white. If you wanted to even go a step further and add some paints, gray dots in there, you can do that as well. I am going to rinse my brush off and I'm gonna do this one leaf that I have by the sunflowers. I am just going to do um, that same sort of green mixture with the light olive green and so actually i'm going to use the light olive green first to define the shape of my leaf i know that this is a very uh, see-through color and i'll go back over it with the second coat perhaps with um also the darker green so i'm using my round brush to um, create the shape of the leaf and it's kind of on the bottom going off the edge of the canvas and then i'm going to go back in and add a coat of that deep green permanent this is a very minor minuscule part of the painting i don't want to get too detailed here it doesn't have to be a perfect leaf it's just a random leaf that's kind of hanging off the edge of the canvas. So there we have it. We have our leaf with the sunflowers. So um, next what I wanna do, uh, I wanted to do one more thing to these sunflowers because they are kind of meshed together. I wanted to outline some of the petals with uh, orange. So this is just the round brush and the orange on the tip of my brush. I'm gonna go in there and slightly outline some of the petals. I didn't outline every single petal from edge to edge just some of them to kind of define which ones are sort of overlapping each other because those sunflowers are right next to each other so just that little bit of orange kind of helps your sunflowers pop a little bit so 
So after I outlined some of the um, sunflower petals, I wanted to go in and kind of lighten the sunflower over here up a little bit too. It got too muddy down there. So I grabbed some um, yellow and white and just kind of adding some lighter colors, um, a lighter coat of paint on those petals. I actually created another petal with that lighter yellow color. And so I think I am done with the sunflowers. And uh, the next step, what we're gonna do is um, the fun part, we're gonna add the quote. So you don't have to do the quote if you like the painting like this, you can certainly leave it like this. Um, but I felt like it needed something on the pumpkin. So I did um, happy fall y'all. And this is that uh, white chalk pencil I was telling you about. Um, this is chalk and a pencil that can be sharpened and erased. It is a beautiful thing to use on canvas. I love using this on canvas paintings. Um, it's just like the chalk, but you get a more defined um, edge. So I wrote that in in cursive first before I painted that in. So I um, was happy with the placement and everything. And then I'm gonna use a number zero round brush. Um, I think this is a liner brush because the bristles are slightly longer. I'm not sure, but it is a number zero brush. And um, painting Payne's Gray. Um, it helps to slightly water it down so that it flows, not drippy, but just a teeny bit of water in there to get your paint to not be chunky when you're painting the fine letters. And make sure you're loading that paint right there on the tip of your brush so you really can define your lines. And we're just painting that in. So I have my happy fall, y'all, um, in cursive. And I mean, you can definitely change the quote. You can do different um, sayings on there, different fall. You can say hello fall or happy fall. And I just, sometimes I like to go back over my letters and just kind of thicken some of the lines to give it some variety. That's what I'm doing there. If you have chalk lines that are still showing through, um, just wait for the paint to dry and you can erase it. Um, with that chalk pencil, you can erase with the eraser on it, or um, it also, er comes off with water so it's water soluble it just it comes off with water just like chalk and then so i wanted to do a few more details in this painting um, specifically on the vine and the leaves so i'm using that zero brush in the paints gray and i'm just basically using that to define um not define but paint lines on the leaves so the veins and I also wanted to add some more color variation into the vine. So this is that darker green and just adding a kind of a thin line, not like right in the middle, but maybe like towards the edge of it um, to give it some color variation. And then doing that all throughout my um, vine. And so that's it. Um, this pumpkin topiary whimsical topiary painting is coming to its conclusion. I'm going to sign my name over here on the side with titanium white and using that zero round brush. And that's it. Thank you for watching and thanks for painting the whimsical pumpkin topiary step-by-step -step painting with me.